there is a limit to what my mom can say to me where I'm like, okay, too far, Janice Baldwin. It's my mom's name. Like, you're still my mom and I'm not like your girlfriend. And my mom's single right now. She's hey. dating a number of people and she was like, a number of people. A number of people. And Go she's Janice. like 72 and she's hot as fuck. She's like a 16 year old boy sometimes. I'm like, whoa, yes. Janice, holy cow. She was cow. being a 16 year old boy, April. She did it. She did this again. She's like, well, I have I have a question for you. I would like some, some advice about like safer sex. I was going down this guy and he has this really juicy cock. And I was like, did you really need, to, in my mind, I didn't say this. I was like, in my mind, like, did you just need, you need to tell your daughter about the, you could have just said, you know, I, I went down on one or two people and I'm curious about STIs. Like, should I get tested if there was fluids? But she's like, juicy cock. And this one guy, he did come in my mouth. And the other one, I think there was pre-cum. I'm like, mom. But I, I didn't say that. Like, I didn't want to shame her because that's how shame works, right? It's when you're like, like, why are you saying that? Like that, you know, so instead I was like, hold it together. I mean, hold it together. But first, a word from our sponsors. It's the vibrator that has no equal. And now, Motor Bunny offers their thrusting sex machine, the Motor Bunny Buck. Enjoy a fan whore discount at manwhorepod.com slash motorbunny or use promo code manwhore at checkout. Now let's get to the show. Shopping for books at bookshop.org avoids the guilt of using sites like on and and bulls. Whether you're searching for novels, memoirs, or books about butts, Bookshop.org has nearly every title you can think of. And when you shop at mybookshop.org link, you're not only helping independent bookstores. A portion of every sale comes back to support the Man Whore Podcast. Mm. Visit manwhorepod.com slash bookshop, fill your cart with titles like The Ethical Slut and The Body Keeps the Score, Again, click the link in the schnotes or go to manwhorepod.com slash bookshop. Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. Shout out to all the love doctors, the relationship coaches, and all the polycule data analysts. This is Billy Presida, and you are listening to the Man Whore Podcast. Welcome, welcome to the show, bringing you sex-positive conversations every week since 2014. This week, we've got like a slightly different kind of show. Uh, first, we're going to be chatting with the gals from the Shameless Sex Podcast, April Lamper and Amy Baldwin. They got a new book coming out. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to be fielding your Q&A questions from the Champagne Room, our super fun, super free, super sex positive Discord server, which you can join by clicking uh, the link in the schnotes or going to manwhorepod.com slash discord. A little half and half action going on. Uh, the intro going to be tight. I'll save all my anecdotes for next week. We'll talk about how I uh, repop someone's cherry for the first time in like 23 years. Because she's only been with her wife monogamously. Uh, you're going to just have to wait till next week for that. But for now, let me let you know that the Naked Comedy Show is back at Hacienda in Bushwick, October 20th. And I'm happy to tell you that the tickets are now on sale. And I'm also happy to tell you that uh, tickets have already been selling. Uh, well, tickets went on sale uh, yesterday, on Tuesday, and today, as you're hearing it, we're already in double digits. So, you know, this tends to sell out. And so if you've been curious about seeing some, yes, actually naked stand-up comedy, click the link in the notes. There'll be a ticket link in there. You'll also see my other upcoming stand-up comedy dates this month. And if you get to the Naked Comedy Show and you're like, I want to take my pants off too, you're allowed to do that. Like, what other comedy show is it like, yeah, take your tits out, air out the cunt, spread the balls if you need to. That's welcome here, okay? Only at the Naked Comedy Show in Bushwick. Before I uh, jump us into the episode, quick fan whore appreciation moment. Don't want to be too quick. I do want to be appreciative. This is the part of the show where I like to give shout outs to members of my fan whore community on Patreon. Y'all are the all-stars, the VIPs in my life. And that's why I want to say a very special thank you to Elra Guterman Kranz. What a fucking name that is. 
feel like at the end of saying your name, I got to take another breath. I feel like I got to just, you know, if, if I'm, if I've been out of shape, I got to stop in the middle of your name just to go <sighs> like, you know, when you're climbing a, like a big set of stairs and you got to stop in the middle and just be like that, ah, just keep going without me. This is not, I know I got to be back in the gym that no, just go. It's okay. It's okay. <sighs> Mont Kranz. Thank you for supporting the podcast. Thanks for supporting the show. And a shout out to Jamie Manning. Loved having you in the peep show while you were here. Hope you uh hope you got a good eye fill on Titty Tuesday or Flag Bowl Friday. And you too can become a member and receive a slew of great rewards and support the Man Whore Podcast. All of my Patreon members are invited to the monthly ha <laughs> oh, fuck. Brenna is so hot movie night. She just jumped into the Instagram live. Yes, uh, all my members are invited on October 12th to hot movie night in the champagne room, our discord server. I will be streaming the classic 1972 Radley Metzger film score. Yes, every month we get together, we watch a porno, we appreciate the plot, we make fun of the sex um, and, and the movie score. Okay, Uh, it's apparently about like the bisexual swinger lifestyle. And there is there is a cameo with the one and only Sylvester Stallone. Yes, Sylvester Stallone was in a porno. It's called Score. And I'm going to be showing it to all of my Patreon members in the Champagne Room on October 12th at 9.15 p.m. Eastern time. Become a member today. Support the pod you love. RSVP for Hot Movie Night at patreon.com slash Podcast, or download the Patreon app and find me on there. Uh, and, and shout out to Ha! <laughs> oh, mother! Hotmovies.com for like very, very unofficially, like please do not tell them, unofficially uh, uh, assisting us in our monthly endeavors. Because they gave me like literally a million minutes. And I'm going to use that to to introduce y'all to the platform. Uh, and if you use promo code MANHOR, I think that still gets you 20 free minutes on top of any package you sign up for. They're not even paying me to say that anymore. But I just feel like it's the right thing to do. All right, everybody. Uh, first up, you're going to hear me with the shameless sex gals, Amy Baldwin, April Lampert, talk about what they've been up to. Talking about foursomes, talking about Amy's horny mom, talking about April losing some shame and their new book, Shameless Sex. Then a couple more bills going to get paid. And then you're going to hear me, very scared to say this, solo on my own by myself answering your questions. All right, everybody, let's get to the show. Beducate is the masterclass platform for all things sex. Here's an embarrassing story. On my 26th birthday, I was in bed with my then girlfriend and one of her girlies, this really thin, young Asian chick. And she goes, hey, Billy, you want to watch me spank her? I'm like, yeah. And she starts spanking her kind of the way I was spanking her. And I'm thinking, yep, her and I, just a couple spanking motherfuckers. We know what we're doing. And after a little while, she stops and goes, okay, so those were warm-up spanks. Those were uh, th- those were soft spanks so that I could prepare the butt to actually be spanked. And that's when I went, oh, no, my spanks are warm-up spanks. Because then I watched this chick wail on my girlfriend. And I'm thinking, like, I've got 100 pounds on this girl. How is she hitting her harder than me? I needed a course. I needed a class. I needed some educators to give me the confidence to spank my girlfriend. If only I'd known about Beducated.com at the time because they've got uh, a new course called The Pleasures of Erotic Spanking. And yes, they're going to show you spanking techniques in a video with a real ass and real spanks. Some of the video lessons in the course include how to set boundaries, finding the sweet spots, spanking positions, and of course, the one I already obviously know how to do, warm up and first spanks. And Beducated.com is offering Fan Whore Nation 50% off an annual membership, all access to over 100 different courses. When you click the link at the top of the schnotes or use promo code manwhore at Beducated.com, but I'm not supposed to really stress that. Click the link at the top of the schnotes. Enjoy your special offer. Give Beducated.com a try. Learn how to spank 
or finger or fuck or tantra with confidence. Again, click the link at the top of the schnotes. No more not knowing. Get beducated. Shopping for books at bookshop.org avoids the guilt of using sites like on and and bulls. Whether you're searching for novels, memoirs, or books about butts, bookshop.org has nearly every title you can think of. And when you shop at mybookshop.org link, you're not only helping independent bookstores. A portion of every sale comes back to support the Man Whore Podcast. Mm. Visit manwhorepod.com slash bookshop. Fill your cart with titles like The Ethical Slut and The Body Keeps the Score. Again, click the link in the schnotes or go to manwhorepod.com slash bookshop. Welcome, welcome, Amy and April, the uh, the wonderful duo behind the show Shameless Sex. Welcome back. Thank you for having us, nice Billy. We love you. We yes. Do. We've talked about you several times on our show since the last time, just, you know, because you're oh. so, so likable and wonderful. All right. Well, remember the one of the last episodes we were talking about your gl- the glory hole days of, yeah. uh, during the pandemic, where it was like the safer of safe sex, and we were like, "That's fucking awesome!" <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Bring glory holes into the mainstream. Let's keep doing them. We don't have to be scared of a virus to do anonymous hanging weird curtains in your janky apartment. Like you can just you can just do that just because yeah. fun doesn't just yeah. have to be safe. Y'all uh, not only have your your awesome podcast, Shameless Sex, which, like mine, long-running, uh, an OG sex podcast, but you also now have a book coming out uh, called Shameless Sex with the very SEO-friendly subtitle. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't get us started about this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, was this a publisher note? Because it's a uh, <laughs> Shameless Sex, great title, colon, choose your own pleasure path to unlock the sex life you've been waiting for. <laughs> It's going to hit all the marks, Billy, all it the marks. It's very, How many times Amy and I have forgotten how to say the subtitle because we'd have changed it few, a few times. People it. are like, what's your book called? I'm like, shameless sex. Something uh, else. After and, that. Yeah. <laughs> so each of you have done your own uh, solo man whore podcast episodes, but uh, I've never had you all on together. So uh, it's been a minute. I'm a little out of out of date. What What's something sexy that's been going on in your each of your lives recently? Uh, I can start. Um, let's see. The sexy and the re- the most recent sexies in my life would be uh, two weeks ago. My partner and I had a fun foursome, uh, hey. and woohoo! Yeah, rendezvous in Paso Robles. Uh, so, which is like the halfway mark between Santa Cruz and LA. Uh, so, we had this hot couple from LA that came up and met us there, and it's so. I'll make this short, but you know those hotel rooms that have a jacuzzi inside, but not like the ones where it's like you pay by the hour, the, like the nicer ones. So we had one of those. <laughs> so it was a really fun, uh, you know, foursome time there with like some jacuzzi time. Some people, you know, made it to the king size bed. And um, yeah, we have our own specific boundaries around that. So we kind of reserve uh, penetrative sex without condoms for us. Yeah, so we did all pretty much most of the other things, not all the other things, um, all all together here and there. And yeah, it was super fun. Uh, yeah, I that's that was yeah fun and very like one of those things where you wake up and you're like, we get to fucking do that. Like that's so awesome that we get to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What what's your favorite part about having foursomes with another so, couple? So I'm personally more of a foursome than a threesome person uh, for mm. a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm pretty straight. And so I think women are beautiful and sexy. In fact, like naked women are maybe se- sexier than a naked man at times because like the cock is just kind of funny. Uh, but I also love a cock. I love cock. Um, and so the foursome, I think you can, it allows room for threesomes within the foursome. Like at one point I walked away and went into the bathroom, like took my time so they could all have like this threesome moment. Um, so I like that. And I just like the aliveness and the energy. Like, even if we're not all hooking up, but it's like, you know, four different people, but two or like two separate pairs hooking up next to each other or in the same room. I just, I'm, cause I'm kind of a voyeur and an exhibitionist. I'm in a pervert. So I just like being around that. <laughs> There's something really fun about group sex, like when you have to, like one of you has to leave, like, uh, you know, I'm in a six some pile and I get up and I got to go to the bathroom. I come back and before I jump back in, I just I have a moment like I'm like leaning on the door jam, just kind of like, this is awesome. Look at this. Look at what's in front of me right now. Yeah, just take it in. Take a moment. And you're like, wow. Oh, my goodness. Lucky me. This is fabulous. If it's your jam, it's not everyone's jam. Sure. I happen to like it. I Super think that's great that you had a bu- like a bath. Did you have bubbles in the bath in the jacuzzi? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, not like you legit bubbles. Bubble. Like we needed better bubbles, but there was some All bubbles. you do is you use shampoo. That's a life hack. Just I, squirt shampoo. I, it will bubble up. I did. Yeah. I probably should have put yeah. more. Yeah. Next time. You got to put lots of shampoo, like the whole mini bottle. Next foursome. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's a good, time. that's a real good hack, April. What's uh, What's going on sexy in your life? You know what? I've been really tapping into my 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 daddy fantasies. Oh yeah, well you and your 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 daddy boyfriend. Um <laughs> yeah. Totally. And I've really never tapped into that as hard or as deeply as I probably could, maybe just with like the porn that I watch. And so I've really been tapping into that just like vocally and it's been really hot. And I don't know if it's because I'm finally getting like um, hormone replacement stuff to help like balance like my, my like makes me really I'm 41 F- FYI if you when you hit like I've, your 40s even late 30s your sex drive just it doesn't go down per se it can go up but it kind of it can fluctuate and mm-hmm. so it, both Amy and I we uh like we met with these doctors because they're on our show and they talked about these uh testosterone pellets and we got our blood work done and they're like you could you could have more testosterone so that I think like beefed up like like put my sex drive just in overdrive like all the time. So I'm trying all these new fun things and playing with fantasy, which I was always really shy to do. I'm I'm really tapping into that. And always mm. I always have more room for anal now too. Hey. <laughs> more room for anal. <laughs> more room for anal in the bedroom. Get it. Her ass has expanded. <laughs> it has. Yes. <laughs> I think I remember you were talking about like I'm trying to get more into the anal when when we were recording uh pre pandemic. Uh, so I'm glad that that journey has expanded for you. It has, yes. And the ass does return to its normal size. If anyone's curious, <laughs> uh, but it, no, it, it, uh, it, yes, I think like since we talked about anal so much on the podcast, and then I lost my anal virginity. I had anal sex for the first time. Amy put it in our in our shared calendar. She's like your anal anniversary in January of 2018. So it was probably right after that. And now it is part of my. <laughs> Part of my sexual experience. Yeah, Amy always puts these funny dates in our calendar. She's like, oh, here's this one. I'm like, damn it. I'm like, Slash, I love it. It's very, it's, it's, <laughs> love it's that awesome your, your bestie knows all the important dates of your sex life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's vital. That's important. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, we've gone into this a little bit like on your individual shows, but if someone hasn't heard them, uh, and maybe if they're not familiar with shameless sex, how did each of you end up so shameless about sex? We'll well, like clearly, I'm still not shameless. Version. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Working um. on it every day, every single day. Um, I mean, I, I was definitely uh, not born the, born this way, nor was I this way when I was a teenager or even in my 20s. I'm 38, going on 39. Mm. Um, I think that the short version would be going to school for psychology and human sexuality, but specifically human sexuality, primarily because I didn't. I had a lot of questions, and I wasn't shameless about sex. But also, I just didn't understand it. I didn't understand my body. Um, and I really was like, I like learning about this. So I think a lot of the education, the sex ed classes I've taken, being around a lot of sex positive people, uh, the podcast certainly has helped me to embrace more and more of my wild sexual self. Uh, really? And- there, oh, yeah. is there What's something that you've become l- more shameless about since starting the podcast? Well, so I think the more I learn about all the variations of human sexuality, the more um, inquisitive I get within myself. Like, oh, would I try that? Am I into that? What do I feel when I hear mm-hmm. about that? You know, like hearing about, you know, a gangbang or a threesome with two cocks or, um, or, or you know, all these different things where I'm like, I, I don't know. This, I, you know, if you asked me 10 years ago, like a gangbang, which I have yet to experience, but I heard you're really good at planning them, Billy. So I might fly you out here to plan that. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't on my, on my list, but. We did a podcast episode with the Swinger Nation podcast, remember April? And I was talking about an episode I listened to that was about my first gangbang. And she was talking about how they all took turns. It was her and then four dudes and took turns where one guy and her partner was a part of that too. The the four dudes kind of taking turns. One guy's fucking her and there's two dicks in each one in each hand uh, and then one dick in her mouth. And they're like, you know, taking these, these turns, these rounds. And so for me, I was like, sounds like a lot. Sounds like a, like I I feel like I'd be distracted and have a hard time focusing on like I- any one person so they get like you know ten percent of my energy and she said that that's like completely normal so you know now I'm like I haven't tried it 
I might be open to that though. And why not? You know, why not? It's not like a gangbang. I feel it could be a really fun, pleasurable experience and not just like this naughty thing you see in porn where like the mm. woman is just a piece of meat. I like being a piece of meat, but like, I feel like I could get some things out of it too and probably oh. get some terrible hand jobs on the side. And uh, April, how, how, how did you end up so shameless about sex? Well, as I said earlier, it's still, it's always a work in progress. I mean, there's still things that come up where I'm like, wait a second. It, it's, can I say this? Like, obviously, I still have, uh, I think I have good uh, dinner etiquette, right? Where I don't just bring up deep anal fisting at a, at a dinner party, at least, at least not until the second bottle of wine comes out. Um, <laughs> however, uh, I think that, you know, some things that people forget about, like in, in um, sex and relationships and, and uh, like there's shame. You, you can be born with it almost and it can happen unexpectedly. And I think one thing that was always really difficult for me was that um, like when I was in my teens, I got uh, an STI uh, that was not curable. It was manageable, but not curable when I was 17. And that was something that I walked around with, like having a ton of shame about. And I finally like we had, I mean, it was probably a year and a half into the podcast world and we were doing an episode on STI status. And I like finally talked openly about it, which was something that only I had only shared with really close friends and um, maybe, you know, my doctors. And it wasn't something that I, uh, I, I felt so much shame. It wasn't something I was open about like, yeah, this is cool because there was stigma around that. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it's, that's not a sexy thing, but that has to do with sex. It has to do with when you're in relationships with people. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to kind of um, wear it as a part of yourself, but it doesn't have to be something that you're ashamed of. Um, just like the the shape of your pussy or the way your genitals look. I think there's a, a lot of folks out there that may think that they're shameless in some ways, but then you can be put in situations where you're like, whoa, I don't want to say that. That feels uncomfortable to me or I don't want people to know that about me. And, and that's okay. Um, I don't think everyone should walk around uh, thinking that um, they have to share their STI status if they if they're positive or something with anyone that you meet on the mm-hmm. street. Um, I think that there is safety in in feeling comfortable with the folks that are around you, and um, and it takes work and time. So that would be my answer to that question. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then Amy. Also, I forgot <laughs> how how could I forget? You used to you used to like run a sex toy shop with your mom, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That has to obviously play a factor into, into how you get to where you are today. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you get on a sex shop with your mom starting at age 24, you were likely <laughs> raised in an environment that had a lot of uh, a lot less shame around sexuality than most people experience. So, yeah, I mean, I grew up in Santa Cruz and was never taught that that sex was a bad thing and that, you know, at some point I would probably have sex and to be more knowledgeable and prepared before I did that. And it wasn't something I couldn't tell my mom that I did, you know, at age 16. Um, and yeah, so we, uh, yeah. Uh, and the sex shop helped, although what, here's what I will say, and this isn't shame, but so my, you know, with my mom, we talk about dildos all the time. We used to sell them sell, side by side. We sold the brick and mortar you know, in 2019 before the pandemic. Um, thank goodness. And, um, mm-hmm. so it was just normal to have conversations about sex, orgasm, sex toys, but there is this like, so maybe I'm shaming my mom in my mind, but I'm not say, I'm not saying things to shame her because I don't want to give her shame. But there is a limit to what my mom can say to me where I'm like, okay, too far, Janice Baldwin. That's my mom's name. Like, you're still my mom and I'm not like your girlfriend. And um, April doesn't know this yet, but the other day, my mom, my mom's single right now. She's hey. dating a number of people and she was like, a number of people. A number of people. And go she's Janice. like 72. And she's hot as fuck. Yeah, go Janice. 72. Yeah. Smoking hot. She's like but a 16-year-old boy sometimes. I'm like, whoa, yes. Janice. Holy she was cow. A 16-year-old boy, April. She did it. She did this again, which I bless her heart. And I didn't say this to her, so I'll say it to y'all if she hears this mom. Bless her heart you. means fuck you, everyone. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> bless her heart. She's like, well, I have I have a question if you got with like some, some advice about like safer sex. So I I was I was uh, hooking I was going down this guy and he has this really juicy cock and I was like, did you really need to, in my mind I didn't say this I was like in my mind like, did you just need you need to tell your daughter about that you could have just said, you know I I went down on one or two people and I'm curious about STIs like should I get tested if there was fluids but she's like juicy cock and this one guy he did come in my mouth and the other one I think there was pre cum like mom but I, I didn't say it like, I didn't want to shame her because that's how shame works right it's when you're like. Like, why are you saying that? Like that, you know, so instead I was like, hold it together. I mean, hold it together. Ooh, it's like a side conversation. Like, mom, I love that you're having great sex. You're sucking some dicks. Good for you. 
Yeah. All you need to do is just be like, I'm doing some oral things. Should I get tested? I don't need to hear juicy cock. Sorry. It's just not. I'm still your daughter. <laughs> Which is surprising because she hates when you swear and say like fuck or shit. But she'll go into some details sometimes that I think it's. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. don't matter as much. It's, it's like fuck shit that like gets her, but she can right. talk about juicy cock and getting fucked raw. Or sorry, having sex with fucked raw. raw. Oh god, you're like, right. yeah. no, I don't and, fuck and like, Amy. Mom. I do not fuck cocks. I have intercourse with juicy cocks. Okay, be polite. Yeah, to the point where I'm raw. I'm like ah la 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 la. Yeah, I get that. I think that's a taboo that uh, remains pretty universal. Uh, yeah. I, as someone also with a with a mother of a certain age who is single and out there, you know, there's there's boundaries. I've met your mother. Boundaries. I think Amy did too. She's lovely. Well, we met yeah. at yeah, back like a few years ago. Lovely. I, I love her. She's like, you gotta come meet Billy, my son. I was like, okay. <laughs> the 2019 <laughs> Brooklyn Sex Expo, where there is a pretty decently viewed uh uh video of her playing with a motor bunny. <laughs> oh yeah. That's awesome. That's like about my boundary. That like I'm I'm chill with that. Yeah. But it can't it doesn't go much further past that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we even us as people who are like sex positive, wild sex people talking about sex in the air, we have boundaries with our parents about sex. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, you've got the book out uh, or it's coming out, Shameless Sex. W- what's the book about? What is it? What can people expect when they go get it? Okay. It is. Do you remember Choose Your Own Adventure? The Choose Your Own Adventure books from back in the day. The Choose Your Own Pleasure Path did come out of this um, this kind of theory that your relationships and sex are always evolving. And mm-hmm. so you get to choose your own pleasure path for the outcome that you desire. So the thing about it, though, is that and and Amy and I didn't really realize it was going to go this direction when we started writing it, but it really go. There's eight chapters and it, and then an introduction, um, and it goes into the past first, the present in the middle, and then the future because you have to work out some of the past shit that that's going on in your life, the shame and the trauma. Because at first it could be like, whoa, it, this could be a little heavy, but you have to work on what's what occurred before and, and identify what's going on and then what's happening right now. Um, and then you can move on to what will be, but you can go back to it again and again and again. And what even if you're in a long-term relationship, even if you're single, even if you're in a new relationship, even if you're uh, casually dating, even if you want a gangbang, um, it applies to you no matter your gender, um, no matter your relationship style or orientation. Um, and I think that's a really cool piece. Um, again, there's 320 pages, so we don't go super deep into any particular area, right? It's not like uh, an expert to an expert guide to kink or an expert guide to anal or sex toys, or this is going to be a guide to sort of give you the right direction um, to have the sex life that you've ultimately been really waiting for or want to. Yeah. And I think what it, what, why this speaks to shame of sex. So like, it's not fiction, like choose your own adventure. It's still like non nonfiction kind of self healthy, <laughs> but sex and relationships, but on shame of sex, we don't tell you like, here's the answer. Like we'll give you, we'll give you many ideas of what could be your answer, but it's not like, Oh, you have this problem. Here's the answer. Listen to us. So what it is, is more like, okay, here's your issue. You know, I'm, I'm faking orgasms. I'm having erectile issues. Mm-hmm. I want to have more sex with my partner. I want to have less sex with my partner, whatever. And instead of being like, okay, here's what you do. Well, what's the outcome that you desire and how do we get you there? And here's all the options to say, like, how do we get you there? But like, do you want this outcome? Go to this page, this outcome, read on. And then w- when you go there, then you see all the options of what you can do and you choose for you because you're your own sexual being and we can't decide for you. You decide for yourself. So it's fun. It's playful. It's silly. It's informative. Uh, it's very shameless sex e shameless sex style. And we're, we're super, super proud of it. And like April said, you can look at it again and again. Um, maybe you look at it now because you have an issue and then you're good. Six months later, you have an issue again. Come on back because we got you. And we Absolutely. just read the Audible. Amy and I did the Audible version. We recorded it a couple of weeks ago separately. Um, but like while I was reading it, because we hadn't really read it cover to cover. We've read it many, yeah. many f- hundreds of times at this point, but <laughs> cover to cover. 
And uh, I was laughing out loud. I was also like, this is fucking great information. I love this. And the director and the sound engineer were both like, afterward, the sound engineer was like, I just want you to know that like, I've already, I feel like I learned so much. I'm going to apply this to my relationship. And he was like hetero, you know, 32 year old. And then our director was just like, I just, this is a great book. And he's like 60s hetero dude. So those two feeling like, you know, that we were in some sort of, of, um, you know, some, we were looking out through this funnel, uh, and yeah. Amy and I, just her and I's opinion, because there's so many different aspects of this book that, to be proud of. And mm-hmm. I think that it, it really can benefit anyone uh, time and time again. I'm proud of it. I'm like, mom, buy 10 copies. Okay. I'm like, <laughs> give me your credit card. <laughs> yeah. No, she did. She, she yeah. no, she bought it. Hardcover her, though, y'all, we want you to pre-order the hardcover hard because that helps us with our sales. And, um, the, the pre-sale campaign is really important. Um, so when people come out with the book, you really want to, the, to really support them, buy a hardcover uh, in advance because it helps our numbers and then gets it out there to more people who can't access Shameless Sex someday. We might we hope that it'll be in other languages, all yeah. those pieces. And also when you buy the hardcover, you get a very special free workshop from us that is slightly provocative uh, oh. and educational and informative about how oh. to pamper your partner. Uh, and so, yeah, if you go to our website, shamelessex.com, you can find that. But yeah, pre-order the hardcover. Well, also pre-sales, if you, when you write a book, Billy, you'll know pre-sales are what helps it get on the lists, like different yeah. lists, not, not only like the New York Times bestselling list, uh, but you want to get on like the Amazon bestsellers, the Barnes and Noble bestseller. So what happens is it rises to the top and then people find it. And really you're helping with your $28 and 95 cents. If you're in the U S um, you're helping more people have shameless sex. And mm-hmm. we have a lot of s- ec- experts, therapists, doctors um, that are quoted in the book to help folks. So it's not just Amy and I's opinion that's with all of the research that we've done and, and the years of knowledge. So it really is like, it's not just to help sales. Like we, it's not like, Hey, we, we need this money. It's like, yo, help more people have shameless sex. Like this is what the world really needs. We should have put a part in there. Billy, just, you know, if we had a part on gangbangs and glory holes, you would have been in there. But like, oh, you know, they, yeah. we had to cut material out. So everyone listening that we would have put Billy in there, maybe in Shameless Sex Round 2, we'll put him in there. Yeah. I'm excited for Billy's upcoming book, whatever that comes up. Shameless Sir Sex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be the... Shameless Sir. More, the... Even more Shameless Sex. <laughs> Cho- choosing even more pleasure paths to unlock more of your sex life you've still been waiting for. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, best SEO ever. Yeah. And uh, another one of your fans that, uh, also did want to know, I, I imagine, unless there's something else that y'all are working on as a as a collective, uh, wanted to know what are you most excited about moving forward besides, obviously, the book launch. Dude, we're having a retreat. We're having a retreat. Oh. A first mm-hmm. shameless sex retreat. And we're going to have more. So we're going to Costa Rica, Amy and I. And uh, we're taking our executive assistant. And it's all, it's for now, it's only Volvo owners, open to Volvo owners. It's full. But we're going to have more next year. And this is something that we're super excited about. Like, we're picking like really fantastic locations, very luxurious, but then it's just like this drop into your shameless sex. And we've got uh, like curated workshops, but a lot of time for relaxation. That is what I'm most excited about. And I don't want to speak for Amy, um, but I know that her and I have been excited about it since we started planning it. We're like, is it November yet? So it's November 2023. We'll have another one in the spring 2024 and probably again in the fall. Ho- we're shooting for at least two a year, maybe eventually you go to three. We'll see how it goes. Very cool. First, we need to execute mm-hmm. this first one, but we're really pumped about that for sure. And the book tour is cool. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, agreed. Totally. And if people want to go find you, a pre-order the book, check y'all out. Where can they go to find you, follow you, support the things, learn more about the retreats? Shamelesssex.com is the best way to go find all things shameless sex with retreats, how to pre-order the book, our podcast. Podcast can be found on all the podcast apps called Shameless Sex Podcast, Shameless Sex. If you go to social media, we're mostly on uh, Instagram and TikTok. Look up Shameless Sex Podcast and follow us, friend us, do all the things. We're on Facebook too. It's like less less popular for us. But um, yeah, come, come and join our little Shameless Sex Revolution over here and make it a big one because... Uh, we're having a lot of fun and I feel like it's really important, just like what Billy is doing over here. So yeah, come play with us. Very cool. I'll have a link to all that in the notes. Uh, and Amy, April, nice to see y'all's faces again. I hope to see them again very soon. Why don't you go ahead and say goodbye to everybody? Ooh, bye everyone. April, what do you, what do you, what do you say on our podcast when you say bye? I say thank you so much for being part of this beautiful shameless sex revolution. We'll see you next Tuesday. (laughs) And Billy, such a pleasure to see you. We'll see you on the East Coast. Ciao for now, everybody. Yeah, the best time to do a solo episode recording is uh, when I get home from a comedy open mic in Bushwick. You know, when my self-esteem is 
at its lowest. I mean, the last time I tried to truly do a solo show, uh, I was in full tears, uh, crying over wallet, no lady. And then the time before that, I had to uh, ask my friend and a super slut to come over and silently sit on my bed and watch me rec- talk to myself for like an hour just so I had like a sounding board. So I knew I'm like, is this funny? I asked people in the champagne room, what kind of solo episode would you want to hear? Many of you said that you would just really like to have like kind of an AMA style episode. And so, well, here we are. I opened uh, the champagne room up to questions. Y'all drop some good stuff in here. I've been doing this podcast for over nine years, over 500 episodes. It's hard to imagine like what you don't already know about me, but let's give it a try. Uh, These first questions come from Tracy. She asks, when you have had some stranger play hookups, were you ever scared? Um, You know, with my overlapping uh, privileged identities, I guess it's uh, I I kind of (laughs) blindly trust that like what bad thing could possibly happen to me. Come on now. No, I uh, it depends on the scene and the circumstances. If I get scared, the more information I know about where I'm going, who I'm doing something with, obviously, the more comfortable I fear I feel. And then I'm usually just scared that I'm not going to like do a good job. The glory hole stuff. I remember the first time I did the glory hole during COVID. That was scary because I really was just letting a stranger into my home and I did not know who it was. I did not know names. I did not know where they were from. I, 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 I knew nothing. I technically didn't know if it was going to be a man. I was pretty confident, but I was just, you know, it was lockdown. It was a time. And the apartment I was in really lent itself so well to a glory hole, stranger play entry scenario. That was kind of like YOLO. Like when else am I going to be able to feasibly do this? And when like other people would feasibly want to participate. Let me tell you, son, I've posted for women to blow me at the, at a glory hole since then. I have not gotten nearly as much interest as I did back in late 2020, uh, back when it was city sanctioned, government sanctioned glory holing, uh, which I think really just shows that the women of New York city are at their core bootlickers. Yeah, just they're, they're, they'll, they'll only suck anonymous dick through a curtain if the government tells them to. So, uh, but the first time, yeah, I was definitely nervous. You know, I'm putting my dick through this hole. It's like I'm putting the dick in the hole. Uh, is my dick going to survive coming out of the hole? Well, between you, me, and everyone listening, and who knows, maybe even this woman, uh, we're going to call her Mercury. Why not? I did have like a covert second phone filming a space. It wasn't like directly where the glory hole was. I wasn't like really secretly filming her blowing me as much. I was secretly filming like her leaving and coming in again, mostly for like evidence, just like should something bad happen, I would like justice. And so after she left and I came down from the thrill of like, oh my God, I just had a stranger come into my apartment and blow me. And I felt long hair. So I'm pretty sure this was a woman, blah, 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 blah. I did go check the footage and I was like, oh yeah, it was a chick. Okay. That's pretty cool. I did delete the videos. Don't at me. Okay. And that began my, my string of glory hole stuff. Uh, the other time I was, I was really scared about, Um, a stranger play scene was in February, 2018. It was the day of the Super Bowl. I think it was Tom Brady versus the Eagles. Yeah, because they did the Philly special. I know I just said football words and some of you are tuning out, but football really has nothing to do with the story. It's really more of a when, not a, a what. Don't, don't lose me. I had gotten dumped that morning by Shay from episode 260. We, I, I got dumped that morning. Then the game was that afternoon. And I was sad and I was bummed and I got really pretty fucking wasted. Uh, and, and then after the, by the time the game was over, I had like sobered up. I'd come down. I might have taken a nap. And then I was chatting with some chick on Pure. 
I don't know if anyone remembers my old sponsor, the Pure Hookup app. Um, <laughs> the Hookup app, that says it's a hookup app. <laughs> and we were, th- me and this woman were chatting, and she was down to, to fuck that night. And I proposed some sort of like public play scene, partially because there was like distance and she couldn't host and I couldn't host. So obviously when you both can't host and one of you is a broke comedian who doesn't want to pay for a hotel room, you just go, well, is there like a park we could play in? And so I, I, uh, I took a car out to this park somewhere in like the Bay area outside of San Francisco. When I arrived, it was really less of like public park as much as it was a fucking children's park but it's nighttime i mean we're talking dead of night this is this is not a story about how i like secretly fucked near children this is just i get there and there's a playground and there's a sand pit and i thought like this is pretty risky billy (laughs) this is a really risky uh, but i still you know i sat down on the bench and uh and 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 took my pants down and i just i'm sitting on a bench it's like, I don't know, maybe midnight, maybe 11 o'clock. My dick is out. I'm in a park in, on the other side of the country. And, I, and, and when a car pulled up, I am hoping so much that it is her and not the police. Because if it's the police, I got no explanation. You got me dead to rights. You, you caught me coconut oil handed. I, you, you got me. But luckily, it was this total fucking babe in her pjs um and you know someone's a babe when they're just in super loose ass pjs and they still look like a babe and now at least now at least i got to share the fear with her because if the cops do come we both get in trouble as opposed to if it's me by me it's a way worse story the the newspaper headline uh um pantsless man in children's park arrested is far worse than pervy couple caught by cops in park better headline they're both bad but just one's badder so i was scared of of being caught for that um but am i have i been scared like obviously for like my safety my life all that more or less depending on the scenario but ultimately i follow through with it because i was young dumb and full of cum at least with the at-home glory hole during COVID, like I had two roommates upstairs, like someone would hear the screams. But that's a good, good starting question. Real good starting. Let's see what we got next here. Okay. Um, I just saw Sabrina's in the room. So actually, yeah. Sabrina asked, other than the Jets, do you have another team to watch this season? Yeah, I do. Hold on. Uh, it's still the Jets. You keep watching the Jets when you watch the Jets on. No, uh, <laughs> no, nah, I just um, another team to watch this season. I think I'm low key wanting the root for Geno Smith because Geno Smith was originally drafted by the New York Jets, and and he was drafted onto a Jets team that had like no weapons for the kid. So there's nothing to really do on top of being a, a young, brand new quarterback in the league. He had, to, he had to face the New York media market. He didn't really have, like, a great team to work with. And so there was no patience for him to develop. And look at him now. He's in Seattle doing great. Right now, he's on Monday Night Football playing the Giants. I'm sure he's crushing it. But, like, other team to watch? I do like watching the Patriots lose. And they're doing a great job of losing. Let me tell you. The, the New England Patriots for the... First few, th- these past couple years are the first time in a long time the Pats suck. And the Pats haven't sucked like this since I was in middle school. I love it. So the teams to watch are the Jets, and the team to watch lose are the Patriots. There we go, Sabrina. We found the answer. But Chuck also asked a football-related question, which is two more football-related questions than I expected the sluts to ask me. So thank you. Thank you for indulging. Uh, oh, now now Chuck sent this uh, weeks ago. So I guess this was after the Jets lost to the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, there's the context. We did not do very well. I think we lost 31 to 10. He asked, so do you think last night's performance by the Jets is indicative of what the rest of the season has in store? Or do you think it's an outlier? Zach Wilson 
um one, the the boy was not supposed to play this year. He was supposed to learn behind Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers lasted four plays before tearing his Achilles. So, you know, and, and the entire team and the entire offensive strategy has been built around Aaron Rodgers. So Zach Wilson got thrown into a situation that a Hall of Fame quarterback is supposed to be in right now. And, you know, he's trying. I think the offensive line needs to be blocking. And I think Nathaniel Hackett, our offensive coordinator, you know, needs to show some confidence in Zach because I think Zach is learning to make the, the, the smart decisions. When I went to the Patriots game, the Patriots Jets game last week, he just looked so scared. Like he looked like he didn't trust himself scared. Like he doesn't want to m- make a mistake kind of scared. It's like when, when you're out at a bar and you're not feeling confident about talking to women and so you're afraid to shoot your shot. And even though you, you've done your inner work, you've gone to therapy, you start working out a bit, maybe you even hired a fucking dating coach. Maybe you hired Nathaniel Hackett to teach you how to talk to women. So you should be ready. But you're just, you're scared of fucking up. You're scared of saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing, maybe accidentally touching her in a way you you didn't realize you weren't supposed to. And and someone's going to, you know, throw a flag and then they're going to talk about you on the TV tomorrow. Uh, so, So you just don't do anything and then you just don't talk to anyone and you don't hit on anybody. That That's where Zach, that's what Zach Wilson was like against the Patriots. Kansas City, he he was he was <laughs> dude had swagger. Dude was like, I'm a fuck everybody's mom in this nightclub. And if it wasn't for that, you know, that that's that that flag, he would have he would have fucked all our moms, metaphorically speaking. So if Zach Wilson plays like he did Sunday night, we're gonna win a lot of football games. And if he doesn't, then you know, we're gonna have a lot of games like he had in Dallas. That's that's my take. But then again, I am a Zach Wilson apologist. Question. Uh, her next one was, how do you prepare for an episode? Um, I, I, I don't. Um, I, <laughs> not really. I very brief. I'll look at the bio. I look at the about. I make sure I, I know their name. And if they have a book, I know like the name of the book or the name of their podcast. But ultimately, what I try to do with this this show is I try to have connected conversations. I don't really have I don't really show up with like eleven pre written interview questions. I just write. I maybe write down a few subjects or topics, or if I have a, a genuine curiosity about something, I'll, I'll make a note. But I otherwise, just like look this person in the eye and try to connect with them about their dating life, their sex life, their gender journey, what have you. If it's an ex lover, ex hookup. Sometimes I might go review where we left off, like text wise, and go check check the texts. But ultimately, not not too much preparation. Chuck also asks, "What living comedian would you most be honored to be booked on a show with?" Jim Norton, comparably pervy comedian. A uh, very sexual comedian, right? Um, tech- Jim Norton and I have have had the same happy ending massage lady before. I my <laughs> my senior year of college, I would see this chick, Busty Blonde Jody. I don't think she works no more, but she went by Busty Blonde Jody. And I remember when I went, I she's like, oh, "What do you do?" And I was like, "Oh, I do comedy." And I'm 21 years old, but I'm claiming oh, I'm a comedian. And she goes, oh, yeah, no, I used to um, I used to have another client who was a comedian. I said, oh, who? what was his name? And she said, yeah, Jimmy Norton. <laughs> Jimmy. Uh, and I was like, what? I was like, that hand has jerked off this my dick and Jim Norton's dick. Epic. So I guess Jim Norton, mostly so I could tell him and see if like he remembers Busty Blonde Jody. Uh, another question coming in. What do people misunderstand about you the most? Hmm. I don't want to get like, woe is me on this one. As a, we'll say, neurodivergent human being uh, who, you know, I I don't say what I mean when I'm trying to make someone laugh. I'm otherwise pretty earnest. I, I'm usually saying what I mean, meaning what I say. And this got me in trouble when I would interact on Twitter, you know, six, seven, eight years ago, because I I thought I existed in a vacuum. Like I 
am only responsible for my own words and people should take my words for my words and for my context. And, and just because other men or other white people or other, other, whatever have, um, done a lot of X, you shouldn't assume that of me because of my gender, my skin color, whatever. So you should just take me for me, but that's not reality. That's not the world we live in. Whatever I say is going to go through a prism of how I'm perceived. And, and then it's going to be interpreted a variety of ways. If, if you've ever shown a light through a prism, right? Like all the different colors spray out all these different ways. So there's all these different ways I can be perceived. And, and then I should sometimes adjust my language or delivery accordingly. Like here's, here's a great example of this. Um, and and I, I think I've told this story before. Some of you may even remember it from real time. Back in 2017, during my first breakup with my ex page, I had a I had a recording uh, with Adam Lucidi. And it's a great episode. I highly recommend y'all y'all scroll back, go find that Adam Lucidi episode. It's so so good. As I'm in the shower, getting ready for Adam to come over, uh, I get out of the shower, and my roommate Angela goes, "Hey Billy, Paige came by and she dropped off a bag of your stuff." And I was like, whoa, heavy, took a quick peek, recognized a couple of the items and just was like, hmm, well, I then asked Adam, hey, you want to like unbag some stuff? You want to unbag this bag with me um, on the podcast? And he was like, all right, sure. And so I posted on Facebook, hey, everybody, tune into the Man Whore Podcast Facebook fan page. I'm going to go live. Uh, My ex just dropped off a bag of my stuff. We're going to go through it. And then and then you know whatever Adam comes over, I click the live button. I'm not like checking my notifications or anything. I got a show to do, and w- when we do get to the portion where we w- where we go through what I called a bag of sad, we really we end up kind of like reevaluating how I could have been a better boyfriend via these items. It brought up these various moments, these memories, and 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 sometimes these pitfalls, things you know I, I've learned from, um, things I think I could have done better by. We then then Adam goes into his very very sweet cute love story. Then he leaves. I go great, that was awesome. I wipe a couple of tears. Wow, that was uh, that was very vulnerable of me. And then I open up Facebook. I check the notification and the thread, the thread on, not on the Facebook fan page. Because I, I kind of watched the numbers. Only three people watched the Facebook Live thing, right? I'm embarrassed to tell you that all publicly, how unsuccessful that that announcement was to getting people to, to check out the fan page. But on my personal Facebook, where I had posted, hey, if you want to see this, come check this out. People lost their fucking minds. I didn't say, hey, come watch me shit on my fucking ex. I didn't say, hey, my stupid ex-girlfriend dropped off my shit. Fuck her. No, I just said, hey, we're going to, my ex dropped off a bag. We're going to go through it on the, on the podcast live on the, on the, and I'm going to stream it on the Facebook page. Everyone pretty much was going, how dare you? Billy, what the fuck? Why would you do this to her? Do you have no shame? Billy, you're so cruel. It was wild, wild. The text messages, the the messages, the notifications, the comments, all this stuff where they're just assuming that I was going to to like shit on my ex. But none of them know that because none of them watched. They all had an opinion before they watched. And I think they thought that because if they were in my shoes, they would have shat on their ex, right? They projected what they would have done onto me, even though I didn't say that that's what I was going to do. I just said, we're going to go through this bag of stuff. So when you ask like, you know, about me feeling misunderstood, like that's a really great example. In the course of my career, I've, I've had a lot of people have a lot of opinions about things that I announce I'm going to do or say that I did, but none of them actually consume the thing to form their opinion. They just form an opinion based on the announcement. So that all that to say, I think I am misunderstood oftentimes just because people don't want to believe that I'm being earnest, uh, I, I, which is why I frequently stress out about like how I'm being perceived. 
not as much about the, well, I want to know how I'm perceived. So people like me, it's, it's more like, I want to know how I'm perceived so I can like adjust my language delivery or whatever accordingly. Uh, so that whatever message I'm trying to communicate is, is received as close to what I intended. If you could choose any location in the world for a man con and everyone who wanted to attend would be able to make it. So don't worry about that. Where would it be? Where would it be? Okay, the, well, there's the slutty answer, and I would say something like Desire Resorts in Cancun, and we just, like, kind of take the place over and have a fuck fest. Ooh, ooh. Wait, another answer just came to me. Okay. Sexy serendipity. Hacienda owns a property in New Orleans. Like, Man Whore Con Mardi Gras edition. Get into some debauchery. It's a pretty sinful city. Cancun or New Orleans, and we bring some sin down to NOLA, and we, like, rent the Hacienda Mansion and whatever else we need to. That's what I would do. That's that's where Man Horkan, if I had my druthers, we would do it at. Good question. Really made me think. I don't know how funny any... I don't know if... Is this supposed to be funny? I hope this isn't rude, Tracy asks, but of all your revenue streams, which one do you enjoy the most? That's an easy one. Patreon. Patreon is my favorite revenue stream because there's something about being sponsored by my fans that I, that I love. In an ideal world, there'd be no commercials, no ads. And that's always possible. If the Patreon were to get to a level where I can live basically on the Patreon, there's no need for ads and I would spare you. But that would that would take everyone who hears this right now pledging $2 on Patreon right now. I know how many uh, listeners I have every month and I know how many downloads each episode gets. And if everyone who's listening to me speak in this exact moment, pledge $2 on Patreon, I wouldn't need to have ads. We wouldn't need to have sponsors. I've been in the same dirty group chat for like, what, seven years or so in the peep show. That's uh, that's available for all of my ten dollar and up Patreon members, and I've so I've been seeing. There's this one woman in Canada. I've been seeing her tits for like seven years. She's seen a lot of my dick. We've never met. That gives me a giggle. I love that. There's like that. I have like that's an element of my my business model is a dirty group chat where we share nudes, gifts, and compliments every day. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, my favorite revenue stream is is the one I enjoy the most is the Patreon, hands down. OnlyFans is a good third behind stand up because stand up I don't know there's I have a pride anytime I make you know if I make thirty five dollars doing ten minutes at some bar show like I claim that on my taxes I want to pay taxes on that because like I am proud that I got paid to do what I love. And then OnlyFans, uh, there's a giddiness that I got paid to do a different thing that I love, which is jerking off. That's a that's a cool third. So Patreon, then stand up, and then the fans only. Okay, JJ Many Sevens asks, what's your most effective online dating pickup line? I don't use pickup lines. Never have. Not into them. They're hokey. They're impersonal. They're lame. Maybe they work for some people. I just don't think I can pull it off because I don't believe in them. So may, but any pickup line I say is like so customized to that person, right? It's customized to that person, to that context, to their profile, to the con, you know, to the to that experience, to that connection. It's all just custom. It's all personalized. Every every pickup line is kind of it's a unique. Fl- it's it's all snowflakes. They're all unique. Sometimes I get into a rhythm where like I find lines that work really well for that situation, and then if that that scenario repeats itself with another woman, then like I might you know reutilize some things I've said in the past. But that's just because I'm like, oh well, that got a laugh, so let me get a laugh again. Uh, I don't use on. I don't use pickup lines. Uh, I wish no one did. I wish people were just more authentic and were being themselves and um, tried to connect. But that is apparently way too vulnerable for a lot of people. So, oh well. 
Right, you know I'm going to say something. Hey, Mary Beth. Hello. In your episode with Brenna from Front Porch Swingers, you guys, like, have, like, this minute where you talk about, like, people that you have been with who have stopped listening to the pod for one reason or another. Um, And she says that it's because it was weird. She was like, after hooking up with you, it was weird to listen to you on the pod. And I'm just wondering, like, do you, what, what do you think was weird about it? I don't think it's weird. Uh, I mean, I always think it's weird when people who don't know me want to have sex with me. I think that's always a questionable decision. I think what Breno narrowed it down to it feels weird to quote unquote be a listener because you feel like now you're a friend or a lover and it feels like a different kind of intimacy to hear me talk every week so she said it was just weird because she's like oh well like now i'm hearing you talk instead of talking to you whereas in when she was just a listener well that's what you did you just listened to me but like mary beth if if we slept together and i took off your blink 182 sweatshirt then it's just kind of like, well, you, now you there's like, oh, well, I guess I could talk to him. So why am I listening to him? Not everyone feels that way, but like some people do. Uh, I, I've heard this before. And so and I did once one, ponder, uh, is it possible to fuck my way out of a listenership? But I'm glad uh, that I have not, uh, both because like I don't think my dick is capable of doing that much kind of uh, that much work. And because uh, the show has been growing over the years. And I'm sure people have found all sorts of other reasons to stop listening to the podcast, even without sleeping with me. Oh, Sabrina. Oh, hello. I don't know if this question's been asked or if it's something you've thought about before or you've talked about it on the podcast because I am uh, notoriously six months behind. <laughs> um, but how do you think your listenership has changed over the years? Like, I've been around for a minute. Do you mean like demographically or something or? Yeah, but also like the vibe. Well, first I would ask, do you think it's changed as someone who's been like in the communities for, for a minute? And also like you've, you've been to man con, so you've, you've met a chunk of the people. Like, do you think it's changed? You know, I think uh, in like a really cool, good way, you've changed a little bit. And so I want to say that I don't want to say like we're more mature because I don't think that's the word, but I think we're all cooler than we have been. And I think not in like the way that like I was less cool when I started uh, listening <laughs> to your podcast. Uh, the man whore podcast guaranteed to make you cooler. <laughs> it's just 70% cooler. Yeah. Um, and this might've been like a, a cultural thing, like over time, like a lot of us have thought more about um, our place in the world and uh, normalizing conversations around sex, which is also pretty on the up and up. You love to see it. But uh, I, laid back, that's not it either. I don't, I can't like, I don't have a word for it. Um, I think we've changed a little bit though. I know I've changed like a whole lot, uh, especially during COVID, which is, it came at an odd time because COVID hit when I was 30 and now I'm 34. So like really the, just my, the front half of my thirties have been in the context of a pandemic pretty much. Like I'm a, I'm just a less horny guy right now, and I don't know what that's about. We're figuring it out in therapy. Have, have my has my audience changed? I I don't know. I think my audience has gotten older. I don't have you know. It's weird. On we don't get access to a lot of demographic information. Like I can know what kind of apps people are using to listen to the show, and like geographically where people are. Spotify and Apple Podcasts will give you like demo information, particularly Spotify. But the problem is Spotify is like only a certain segment of my overall listenership. Right. I, yeah. I don't know how to answer that. Cause I don't have the data. I only have like all the anecdotal data, like in my communities, it feels like, for example, very 50, 50 men, the women. Um, but like on Spotify, it's like two to one men, the women, but I also don't have access to like all the other apps. So I don't know if that's the whole podcast or if that's just my podcast on this one platform. But I know a lot of us are getting older and, uh, you know, I've been growing up and I feel like some of y'all are growing up with me. Hope that answers. Mary Beth, did you have another question? I can't find my unmute button. 
I mean, that, I, I think that's been a problem a lot of guys have been struggling with, finding your unmute button. Do you have a very pronounced unmute button? Is it is it easy to find or is it like really, really small and you're just like, oh my God, is this it? Or is, is that just like another ridge? Like if you're paying attention, it's right there. Do you have a very sensitive unmute button? <laughs> Typically, uh, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't take long usually if you are uh, paying attention. <laughs> well, what have you got? My other question is: I want to know what your most embarrassing moment on the pod was, and did you get it through edits, or did you leave it on the cutting room floor? Hmm. First, I'll say real quick. I, I think just to to almost reopen Sabrina's question. I don't know if the audience has changed. I think my audience has kind of always been pretty mature like that. Like, yeah, y'all like saucy details and stuff, but then you kind of bring it back in and, and you want some depth. You're not the audience that just wants to hear a funny anal story and that's it. Like you want to hear about pooping on a dick, but then you want to know like, how did pooping on that dick affect you emotionally? That's my audience. Those are my people. Embarrassing moments on the podcast. I mean, one of them that didn't make it onto the podcast because it didn't get recorded was the first Man or Podcast live show. We did discuss it on her episode, but um, comedian Rachel Shank, she did not remember that we ever went out. Like We went on a couple dates. We saw Avengers Age of Ultron fucking midnight showing open at night together. That means a lot to me, you know? And you and, and so when we got on stage at the live show, I had her go on first. And she sits down, and we are on stage in front of, like, a nice packed audience at the People's Improv Theater. And just, like, right off the gate, she goes, I don't remember hooking up with you. And then I'm just on stage with that. I was just like, what? And she's like, yeah, I mean, like, when you asked me to do this, I believe you. When you say we've been naked together, but I don't remember that. And I was like, whoa. So that was like funny, embarrassing. <sighs> oh, I mean, again, these are things I don't know if there's been. When I listen to the show in post, I'm not one of those people who hates the sound of my own voice. Obviously. However, there I get embarrassed by some of my, especially my earlier interviewing. So when I'm editing when I edit stuff, I try not to have to edit anything. If it's a great conversation, I mostly don't have to do anything. When I delete stuff, when I edit stuff out, it's not necessarily taking out a bad take. It's it's usually me interrupting and offering nothing. Like I, I'll be out of the headphones on and I'll be in a coffee shop and I'll be hearing myself interrupt the guest and go, Billy, shut the fuck up. Billy, shut the fuck up. And I feel embarrassed when I hear myself interrupt a guest, typically a woman, when I'm interrupting a woman and do nothing with it. It, it was episode, I think, 15. It was Lee. Um, she has, she had, we talked about her vaginismus. Uh, but there's a moment where she's starting to get a little tearful about when we were like rehashing our history together. And in the middle of her, like, uh, she's about to cry, and I interrupted her. And it, and it wasn't even with anything good. And it was just like, oh, maybe this is why I'm single. I just interrupt with nothing worthwhile. And if I would just shut the fuck up more, maybe I could keep someone around for two years. So uh, that that's that's what's normally embarrassing to me. Um, but I'm not sure there's something embarrassing 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 yeah here's here's the most embarrassing this is the most embarrassing i felt doing this fucking podcast was i tried to do a solo episode it was supposed to be like a year in review it was supposed to be like at the end of 2015 and i was going to do some sort of slutty year in review and i like wrote it out and i just performed it kind of to myself by myself five times hated it every time kept deleting it kept starting over i would do like 40 45 minutes and then say i hate this and start over 
and it's just not working. So I had to call my friend and a super slut who lived nearby and she came over and she just sat on the edge of my bed and watched me talk to myself. But then that's, that was fine because now I have like a visual sounding board and I can see when she's smiling. I see when she's laughing. I see when she's not laughing and that's more comfortable. So even though she wasn't talking with me, uh, I, I at least like there was another presence. So even like answering your questions with you asking them, I'm like more comfortable asking because like it's to a person. I didn't get into podcasting so everyone could hear my voice. I got into this podcast in addition to like wanting to see if we could figure out what went wrong with these women. I got into this to like have connected conversations with real human beings. That's why I hate doing Zoom episodes. I almost, I very rarely will do a virtual recording because I, that's not what I started this for. I'm not trying to crank out content. I'm trying to like connect with human beings. So, I mean, so thank y'all for, uh, for, uh, turning off your mics and, and asking some questions. Uh, definitely made this far less embarrassing for me. Tracy, your mic's on mute. Did you have something you wanted to say or ask? I just want to say hi and say thanks a lot. I really enjoy it, and you make me laugh every day. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you think I'm funny because uh, when Esquire put me in their top sex podcast list, they had four categories. where they So they were like reviewing each of these sex podcasts, and they would mark them as having uh, like as educational, funny, cultural cachet, and raunchy, right? And I got marked down as as educational and cultural cachet. Now, funny, fine. I'll give them that. But raunchy? I got a hand job on mic. What else can I do? I came on mic. What else could I do to be raunchy? But it did hurt my feelings a little bit that they didn't like say I was funny. I was like, Jesus. Like, oh, okay, fine. Uh, and that's when I'm sometimes like, oh God, do these people think I'm funny? Am I supposed to be funny? Maybe I'm not supposed to be funny. Maybe I'm not funny here and I'll go be funny on stage with my dick out. I don't know, but, um, I'm glad you are enjoying the pod beyond my pervy stories and beyond the, um, cultural cachet. (laughs) This will be my really last one. I'm proud. How much... What, what is my, um... How much come would a woodchuck come if a woodchuck could come, Chuck? I mean, the woodchucks always do come, so it's whatever. Why do you know that? Okay, keep going. When you think of the future of the podcast and the man whore brand, what do you hope to achieve? A lot of the same things I wanted to achieve uh, from the beginning. I want a lot of people to hear this show. I want to build a fan base and following who will follow me to stand up. But most stand-ups don't make their full livings from the stand-up. Or they had to do something else to build enough people to do the stand-up. I just want to do the stand-up. It is very difficult to otherwise just do stand-up without doing something else. So I like that I get to tell you all these stories. I like that I get to have these connected conversations. I want to keep doing that. I would love to have... um, a TV show or, you know, some sort of a Netflix show where I get to continue having connected conversations. Uh, For those of y'all who have heard the, the, the two live podcasts where comedians are heckled by their exes. That's a show I really think would be great on a streaming service or comedy central or something. I don't see as part of the man whore brand. I see as the Billy brand. And again, like the man, you know, I'm Billy. This is the man whore podcast. I am not the man whore. Uh, but you know, I, there are definitely also books in me too. I want people to stand on stage, we're talking and or talking to a microphone and make people laugh. And a reverse gangbang. I think that would be nice. I think that fell through earlier this year. It fell through for my 26th birthday. I, 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 that would be a nice fun thing to accomplish too. Why not? If we're going to swing, let's swing. Yes. Me in a bed with four or five partially disappointed women you know uh that would i think that's a dream for me so yeah no i think i think we did the thing that's that's a solo episode uh thanks everyone in the champagne room who asked questions uh thanks to mary beth sabrina and tracy for uh letting us hear y'all's voices uh that was a wonderful surprise thanks to everyone who shares the man whore podcast 
on their social media with their friends at the office without shame. Thanks to the Peep Show for all the Titty Tuesdays and Flagpole Fridays. And thank you to mom and dad for having sex. Because I'm here. Stay slutty. Shopping for books at bookshop.org avoids the guilt of using sites like on and and bulls. Whether you're searching for novels, memoirs, or books about butts, bookshop.org has nearly every title you can think of. And when you shop at mybookshop.org link, you're not only helping independent bookstores. A portion of every sale comes back to support the Man Whore podcast. Mm. Visit manwhorepod.com slash bookshop. Fill your cart with titles like The Ethical Slut and The Body Keeps the Score. Again, click the link in the schnotes or go to manwhorepod.com slash bookshop.